the day God told me to tell the believers, this is what he told me. We must step out of the familiar in order to advance in the kingdom. I got a couple of that. It don't bother me of it. We must step, let me make it a little clear. We must step out of tradition in order to advance in the kingdom. We must step out of religiosity in order to advance in the kingdom. See, what God calls right, tradition calls wrong. What God calls straight, tradition calls crooked. There's no way if you were a woman, just because you wear pants in a pulpit, you should sit out. But tradition will treat you like that. That's all right. That's all right. I'm going to take my time. Is that okay? So, 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 so guess what? On a church anniversary, I said church, not a kingdom. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's familiar to wear a suit and tie. Come on, now. Because church has taught us to look the part. Uh-huh. All right, all right. But in a kingdom anniversary, you ought to come in a place with your mindset set a certain way where you able to work if you need to work and don't worry about messing up your thousand dollar suit, not messing up your son. You gotta step out of the familiar. When you come and you step out of the familiar, you don't care what people think about you anymore. When you step up out of the familiar, you come in praising all by yourself. When you step up out of the familiar, oh, for my preacher, I got a compound. When you step up out of the familiar, you will take a lick and keep on ticking. It ain't about what you going through. It's about the deposit he's made in you. Give me some kingdom people. You will step out of the wilderness. You ain't worried about what people Treasures 
of this world. Don't set your mind on the things in the earth. Lay your mind for the hereafter. Jesus begins to teach the disciples a prayer. They didn't go deep in the tongues. They ain't saying nothing wrong with tongues. They didn't go in the pathetic, as I call it. They want prophets for profit. Let me say that again, show y'all. They want prophets for profit. We got too many ulterior motives in the house of God. If I can't help you financially, you don't want to come and fellowship with me. Step out of the familiar. So he began to teach disciples that the kingdom come that will be done. It means until we get the full realization of God's kingdom, we must strive to emulate on earth how business is conducted in heaven. Meaning all that is right and true and good and kind. Now you must understand this before I read this stuff to you here. Here we have a man coming out of the wilderness, John the Baptist. He comes out, the Bible says, with camel hair on his back, eating locusts and wild honey. He know it. He said, now you can't do that because that was John the Baptist. It's grace for John the Baptist. Amen. So he comes out of his place. And God told me to tell the people in order to advance in the kingdom, repentance must take place first. Some of y'all may think I'm say that again. In order to advance in the kingdom, repentance must take place first. I find myself repenting every day because I'm taking on the world system. Am I by myself? I'm taking on the world system because I don't understand a kingdom mindset. John the Baptist, he came out of the wilderness, apostle. And he came out of the wilderness. And he didn't come from a pretty place. Can you imagine coming out of a place this destitute, this desolate, this dry? Come on, somebody. You're probably hungry. You're probably weak. But just because he looked like that, that didn't mean he didn't possess something that was of value. He comes up out of this world. one that comes out of the wilderness, Dr. G, he is the one that's going to unlock the priest for the priesthood. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just because you look jacked up don't mean God can't use you. Yes. I come to talk to some kingdom minded people uh, that ain't looking the part, but understand you got to be in the part. Yes. Now, now watch this, we're going to get into this advanced department, but he comes out of the wilderness dad. The Bible says there's a cry uh, coming out of the wilderness. Yeah. That's why I said stop the music. Because there's going to be a certain cry that will move up. Yeah. See, we ain't crying loud enough. We ain't praising loud enough. We ain't shouting like there's a cry. Let me hear who is so far. Worshiping 
content you today. I've changed my mind. That's why I operate like on the head to, and not the tail. I've changed my mind. I'm advancing in the kingdom. One of the hardest things is to deal with an eternal mindset. I'm going to read something to you. And then we're going to shout. Is that okay? Yeah. We got to shout before the message comes through. Yeah. Mm. God told me this this morning. That a new country, or we're moving in a new country, becoming a citizen of a new country involves three things. Did you know that kingdom citizens are a moving country? Did you hear me? When you're a kingdom citizen, you're a moving country. I'm going to explain that to you. A citizen of a new country involves at least three major transitions. Can I, can I just stop over this? Why do you think transition in the body of Christ is so hard? Because the enemy wants to stop you from coming into your purpose. You're telling us, oh, it's your faith, I'll be there. Then when it's time, you don't show up. Because distraction has came to throw you off your course and your purpose. But God has begun to tell me to go back to the original information. And in the beginning, he gave us dominion. So why we have to defeat it? He gave us authority. Come on, somebody. Why are we walking with our hands down? He gave us, when he gave you the Holy Ghost, that's all the power you need. I ain't got to ask you to lay hands on me. I'll lay hands on my self.
But what God gives you is going to build you. It's going to make you. So, 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 so. Jesus, he begins to, after John the Baptist baptizes, and he's still talking about events in the kingdom, the Bible says, straightway, he rose up. Another word for straightway is immediately. And the Bible says, there was a dove descending upon his head. The dove represented the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. And so once repentance had been preached, now listen to me here. Can you imagine me coming from downtown and sleeping on blankets in the park? And I'm looking jacked up, dragged up, beaten up, tore up, and I come saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But the church has been so programmed that you gotta look a certain way to preach God. Okay, let me get back to this. There are three major transitions. Y'all got to hear this. In order to move as a citizen of the kingdom. One, you must understand the distinct world view of the country. Did y'all hear that? Yes. You got to understand this distinct world view of the country that you're supposed to be in. That's, right. That's why everybody talking about Trump. What are you talking about? Trump from this country anyway. Why y'all talking about it? Hmm? Our mind ain't supposed to be on that. Okay. It's quiet here now. And some of y'all been dog talking about Trump like crazy. Don't talk to them. Talk to them like quiet. Holy Ghost, read your mail. Holy Ghost, read your mail. You've been talking about more Trump than Jesus. So you can't get an eternal perspective because your mindset is set on this world. He said, love not the things of this world. Yeah. 
waiting on their son. Yes. <laughs> because our spirit bears witness for one another. That's right. They teach kingdom. And so once you begin to get reintroduced to the kingdom, things start making sense. Your perspective on things start to change. And the reason why I say reintroduce is because who he did for them. He also did call. And who he called, come on somebody, he justified. And he put justified. So you just don't remember it. Now you just walking into it. Because he knew you before he was in your mother's womb.
Can I help some of y'all real quick? I got five more minutes. Let me help y'all out. Because church people have hurt people. The reason why the church is so jacked up because hurting people hurt people. Come on, somebody. But I said, the God is going to take away all the pain. He never in time to get all the same factor. He ain't like God. He is the real thing. Come on, somebody. He's a God that will bring you out of troubled waters. He's a God that will take you apart and not the truth. He's a God that will give you the desires of you up your heart. He's a God. He begins to make a distinction. And those who are advancing in the kingdom. See, people that have a kingdom mindset, when your leaders say, can you do this? They say, here I am, here am I. Yes. Send me on go. Yes. That's a distinction. The other distinction is you complain and you whine and you cry, but you wonder why you keep getting looked over. Because you ain't got it yet. That all you got to do is be a servant. All you got to do is lay down. All you got to do is give up of yourself. Try to be good. Hallelujah. He, he makes a distinction. And when he makes that distinction, you can always know. Because I said he said he created night, but when he said day it was good. And they existed, but they couldn't coexist. You will never see daytime and nighttime together at the same time. So why we got believers with non believers at the same time? non-believers. If you want to miss it, you're supposed to be getting them to bring them in. That's a good thing. But if you're hanging out and you ain't got a kingdom mindset, don't fool yourself if you use a smoke crack like me. And say, I'm going in the crack house to save Johnny. If I ain't got a kingdom mindset and I ain't got a relationship with God, guess what? I'm going to go in preaching and I'm going to come out smoking. I'm going to come out jacked up. I'm going to come out broke. Busted. And The Christ. 
Now I'm trying to make this symbolic to the body of Christ. Peter wasn't the only one with Jesus. Some of you ain't the only ones with your leaders. But how is it everybody has not been revealed who they are?
But here comes the eternal perspective. The Bible says, even though they didn't receive it, but they died, but they seen it before off. Can I explain something to you? I'm about to get happy. Even though they didn't see it, they see it. Because faith is a substance and the evidence of things not seen. Come on, somebody. You can't see what God is doing, but you can see it. Because you have an eternal perspective. You have an eternal mindset.
called you to a place in the kingdom. Jesus. Can I share this with the praise team here? Keep doing what God has called you to do. Amen. It's unto Him. Hallelujah. People don't understand this when you're up in ministry. You got to push the praise of power. Stuff people don't rob them from where they've been and they picked up spirits and all this kind of stuff. You got to be in a place. Ain't God to push through for those who do that. You know what I'm saying? I just tell people, I'm going to go fast from TV. I'm going to fast from all these things. You know what God told me? He said, if you don't need to fast from things, you need to consecrate yourself from yourself. still got some people who know how to hold the blood of St. Man. And y'all can praise God for having that. I said we still got some people who know how to hold up the blood of St. Man. So you got to say the blood will keep you. The blood will cover you. The blood will sustain you. The blood will redeem you. The blood will reconcile you with God. Words like crazy of life, and because of distractions, because of struggles, because of whatever you went through, you're in a standstill. And God is saying, Come on, knock on the door of your heart right now. He knocking on your heart. Say, You know your position, you know you're in the right place, you know you need to cut him off. You know you need to leave her alone because it's hindering you from coming into who I set you up. And every time, because the word's been spoken, and I believe the word is anointed, is spoken here, every time you go through, you feel more pain than you did the first time. He said, I'm here today to take away all your pain. I believe my brother says this all the time. There are certain atmospheres you've got to put yourself in and stuff that just not fall out without your permission. Yeah, yeah. You're in an atmosphere where stuff just begins to start falling out because of the worship, because of the praise, because of the angel of the house with their prayer life. You're in an atmosphere. All you got to do is show up. Yeah. And stuff will begin to fall. Guess what? The things that hurt you then ain't gonna hurt you no more like you did then. All right, all right. Because you understand now that I'm advancing. I'm going higher. Some of you walk in places that you never thought you'd be able to walk into because people told you never be nothing. And you never amount to nothing. But today God said you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. And y'all praise God, you can do all things. Not some things, not most things, but all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to do something here. Does anybody in here didn't know that you, your car is greater than what you've been living? And you need God. To order your steps. Guess what? I'm an overseer of two ministries, and I need God to order every step that I make. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? If you need God to order, God, I'm tired of going around the same thing I'm going around. I don't even know what it means to be advanced in the kingdom because it seems like every time I go this way, such and such comes in my family. Because my family don't really accept who I'm coming into because they remember who I used to be. So if you need to touch with God, make your way to the altar. 